Walt Disney, Lilo and Stitch. On the planet Turo, Jamba the scientist was in trouble. He stood in front of the Grand Councilwoman, the most important alien on the whole planet. We believe that you have made a new kind of life, she said angrily. That's not true, cried Jamba. A door behind him opened, and a little blue creature dropped out. It had big ears and lots of teeth. Okay, the scientist said quickly. But I only made one. What is that thing? Asked Captain Gantu. It looks dangerous. Jamba looked proudly at the wild little alien. This is Experiment Six to Six, he said. Nothing can hurt Experiment Six to Six. Jamba continued. There is nothing stronger or faster. He's the perfect weapon, and he only wants one thing: to destroy, to destroy everything. The Grand Councilwoman turned to Gantu. This is a terrible crime, and Jamba must go to prison for it," she said. She looked at Experiment Six to Six. We cannot let this creature hurt anyone. Take it to a planet that has no other life. Captain Gantu took the little creature to his spaceship. You won't escape from this," Gantu said. But Jamba's description of Experiment Six to Six was right. The little blue creature was fast and strong, fast and strong enough to escape. In a few minutes, he was free. When he found a little police spaceship, Experiment Six to Six did not stop to think. He jumped into the ship and flew out into space. He's escaping! Shouted Gantu. Get him! Lots of police ships followed, but they could not catch Experiment Six to Six. His ship shot into deep space. Back on his ship, Gantu could only watch the escape. Get the Grand Councilwoman on the radio, he said angrily. The Councilwoman was angry too. Where did Experiment Six to Six go? One of the aliens checked her computer screen. To a little planet, she said. Its name is Earth. The Grand Councilwoman's first idea was to destroy the whole planet. But there was a problem. There was life on Earth. Bring me someone who knows about this planet," said the councilwoman. Minutes later, Plickly arrived. Earth was his favorite planet, and he knew all about it. The life there isn't very smart, but it's very interesting," Plickly said. Here, look at some pictures. He began to explain about life on Earth. We have to catch Experiment Six to Six quietly. The Grand Councilman decided. What do we know about him? Experiment six to six had no family or friends. We have to talk to the scientist who made him," said the Councilwoman. Jamba was not surprised when the Grand Councilman came to talk to him. If you catch Experiment six to six, you can leave this prison," she told the scientist. But Jamba might put Earth in danger," cried Plickly. Who will watch him? You will, Plickly," the councilwoman answered. "You and Jamba will go together and catch this creature." Plickly's one eye opened wide in surprise. On Earth, there was a little girl called Lilo. She lived on the beautiful Hawaiian island. Every day after school, she liked to swim in the ocean and feed a sandwich to her favorite fish. Lilo loved the beach and the water. They were fantastic, but Lilo's life was not always so fantastic. Perhaps that fish in the water was her friend, but Lilo had no friends at school or at the beach. She was always alone when she walked home from the beach. One afternoon, Nanny, Lilo's big sister, was running home. Lilo and Nanny's parents were dead, so Nanny looked after her little sister. It was not always easy. Today she had an important meeting with the social worker, but she was late. Lilo, open this door! She shouted when she reached the house. But Lilo did not listen. She was lying on the floor and listening to sad music. Nanny pushed her head through the dog door. 
Listen, the social worker will be here soon. Open this door now, Lilo. If you don't open this door, I'll... Nanny looked around. A tall man in dark clothes was behind her. This was Cobra Bubbles, the social worker. Lilo, if you don't open this door, I'll... Give you a big hug, said Nanny quickly. Inside the house, Cobra Bubbles looked around at the messy room and the dirty dishes. He was here to learn about the two sisters. Was Nanny able to look after her sister? Was Lilo safe and happy? Do you often leave your sister at home alone? He asked Nanny. No, cried Nanny. I just went to the store. Cobra had questions for Lilo, too. He wanted to know all about her life. Nanny tried to give her little sister the right answers, but it did not help much. Before he left, Cobra told Nanny, This was not a good visit. I am coming back in three days. Things must be different then. When they were alone again, the two sisters fought. Do you want them to take you away? shouted Nanny. Go to your room. Lilo was at the top of the stairs. I'm already in my room, she shouted and shut the door. Later that night, Nanny looked inside Lilo's room. The little girl was on her knees at the side of the bed. She did not notice Nanny at the door. I need someone to be my friend, Lilo was saying quietly. I need someone who won't run away. When she heard these words, Nanny felt sorry for her little sister. She knew that Lilo was unhappy and lonely. But maybe Nanny could do something about that. Maybe Lilo needed a pet? On another part of the island, something very strange was happening that night. A little spaceship fell from the sky and hit the ground. Not many creatures could walk away from that, but the thing inside the spaceship was different. It was experiment 6 to 6. He started to look around. He was free, free to follow his nature and destroy everything. Suddenly, there was a noise. Lights were coming toward him. Experiment 6 to 6 was ready to fight anything. A big truck hit the little alien. Experiment 6 to 6 could not remember anything after that. The next day, Nanny and Lilo went to the dog pound to get Lilo a pet. We're looking for a dog. Nanny told the woman behind the desk. We want a good, strong one. We want one that isn't going to die or live. The sisters did not notice, but something was moving across the ceiling. Something blue. It was experiment 6 to 6. The little blue creature did not want to stay in this strange place. He had a whole new planet to attack and destroy. When experiment 6 to 6 left the building... There was a flash of green light. Someone was shooting at him. It's nice to see your face again, cried a voice. Jamba! The alien scientist was here, and there was another alien with him. Quickly, experiment 6 to 6 ran back into the dog pound. Lilo was there. Hello, she cried. Are there any animals in here? There were dogs there but they're all trying to hide from experiment 6 to 6. Quickly, experiment 6 to 6 made a plan. He pulled two of his six legs into his body. Then he ran into the little girl's arm. Lilo returned to the desk with experiment 6 to 6. I like this one, she said. What is that thing? asked Nanny. A woman from the pound screamed. We think that is a dog. A truck driver brought it here last night after his truck hit it. She tried to take the strange dog back. We have better ones. Not better than him, said Lilo. Nanny was not sure about this, but at last she agreed. Before they could take their new pet home, they had to give him a name. I know, said Lilo. His name is Stitch. For Lilo it was a new beginning. She and Stitch jumped on a bike and rode away. Lilo was having a great time. She wanted to show Stitch everything. She did not know that really Stitch was looking for a way to escape. But there was one thing that the little alien was afraid of. Water. And in a small island with ocean all around it, water was everywhere. 
Stitch knew that Jamba was following him, but the scientist could not catch Stitch when he was with the girl. At the end of the day, Lilo took Stitch to meet Nanny at her work. She was a waitress in the restaurant. Lilo and Stitch sat at the table and waited. At another table, there were two people who looked very strange. That was because they were not people. They were Jamba and Plickly in human clothes. Jamba grabbed Stitch, but the little alien fought back. When Rani ran over, Stitch had Plickly's hat in his mouth. Nanny pulled Stitch away, but the restaurant owner was very angry. Nanny lost her job. Come on, Lilo, she said sadly. In Lilo's room that night, Stitch did not want to go to bed. He ran around the room and checked everything. He was not very careful and he broke some of Lilo's things. You break everything that you touch, she said. Maybe you should try it and build something. To her surprise, Stitch listened. He used some books and boxes and toy cars to make a little city on the floor. But then he began to walk through the city and destroy the buildings. He picked up a tour car and pushed it into his mouth. At last, Stitch became quiet when Lilo read a story to him. It was the story of the ugly duckling. In the first picture, the ugly duckling was crying in the dark forest. He's sad because he's lost and alone. No one wants him, said Lilo. She pointed to the next picture. Now he's happy because he's with his family. In a family, no one leaves you or forgets you. Stitch's dark eyes looked at the pictures. He knew that there was something important about them. He grabbed the book and took it with him to his little bed. The next day, Nanny looked for a new job, but she had no luck. She and Lilo were feeling sad when Nanny's friend David met them at the beach. I know something that will make you happy, he said. He had two surfboards with him. Come out on the ocean with me. A few minutes later, they were riding the waves. Lilo was on David's surfboard. Stitch rode on the back of Nanny's surfboard. At first, he was not happy with the water all around him. But he watched Lilo, Nanny and David. They seemed so happy. Stitch was happy too. Suddenly, two big hands from under the waves grabbed Stitch and pulled him under the water. It was Jamba. At last, the alien scientist had experiment 6 to 6 in his hands. Lilo and Nanny were off their surfboards. Stitch reached up to grab Lilo's hand, but Jamba pulled him down. The little blue creature fought back wildly. He escaped from Jamba and Plickly, but he could not swim back up to the air. He was not able to breathe. Stitch was in real danger when David swam down and rescued him. Cobra Bubbles was waiting on the beach. He knew that Nanny lost her job at the restaurant. He was unhappy to see Nanny carrying Lilo in front of the dangerous waves. You need to think about what is best for Lilo, the social worker said sadly. If you can't look after her, I will have to take her from you. Cobra turned and slowly walked away. David wanted to help his friends, but he did not know how. I thought that Nanny and Lilo would be okay, he said sadly. He looked at Stitch. The new arrived. At bedtime that night, Lilo held a photo of her family tidily. It showed both her parents when they were alive. She looked up and told Stitch. Our family is little now. You can be part of it, but if you want to leave, you can. Strange new ideas were growing in Stitch's mind, but he did not understand them. He picked up the ugly duckling book and left through the window. Outside in the dark forest, he looked at the picture of the lost little duckling. He, too, felt lost and alone. Plickly woke up next morning and looked around. He was starting to hate this stupid planet, with its horrible insects and its horrible oceans. Jamba was unhappy too. It was impossible to catch experiment 6 to 6 quietly. Suddenly, there was a sound from Plickly's radio. Have you caught experiment 6 to 6 yet? The Grand Councilwoman asked angrily on the little screen. 
When she learned the answer, she shouted. You two are off the job. Captain Gantu will catch six to six now. Plikli was sad to hear this, but not Jamba. That means that I can catch six to six my way now, he said. Nani looked up sadly at the kitchen clock. Cobra Bubbles was coming for Lilo soon. Lilo was sad too. Stitch left, she said. He didn't want to stay. Nani hugged her sister. She did not want Cobra to take Lilo away, but how could she stop him? Now she did not even have a job. Sometimes things have to change, Nani said. Suddenly there was a knock at the door. Nani! cried David. I found you a job, In town, but you must Nani come now. Happy about Nani jumped job. up. Lilo, I'm going, going out. Don't open the door for anyone. Feel nervous. Stitch that was through the forest her house. when Jamba found when him. When Nani arrived, she the could not believe her eyes. His weapon out there was no and house. Ready. He was surprised when Experiment 6 to 6 did not Cobra attack Bubbles him. Bubbles was there too. Then he saw the book in front of the creature with its picture of the ugly duckling and his family. Nani cried. You don't have a family, Jamba says. I Cobra made you. The house Your only purpose it's is clear to destroy. That you need her a lot Stitch more turned and you. ran. Jamba did Lilo not did worry not about catching experiment anymore. six to six she quietly. quietly. Opened the car door and she ran, ran after the little the blue forest. alien. She could all hear the, the voice of Cobra house. and Nani behind her. Lilo, Lilo was surprised she did to see Stitch back home. Suddenly, she was much more surprised when Jamba followed him inside. The scientist pointed his alien weapon at Stitch and shot Lilo a ball did not of green light. Them anymore. Stitch she was too fast to the hit, car door but Jamba did not stop. He shot again she and again. Cobra and Nani so there were holes her. everywhere Lilo! in the roof but she did not and the walls. Suddenly, Lilo ran to the phone and called Cobra Bubbles. Aliens are attacking my house. Hole. She said. The photo of Lilo Suddenly, he gave Lickly it to was Lilo. in the house too. She pulled Lilo outside just before Jamba and Stitch destroyed the whole house. He pushed his other pair of legs out of his body. You're one of them, said Lilo in surprise. An alien? Go away, Stitch, said Lilo sadly. But before Stitch could do anything, there was a sound behind them. Captain Gantu from the planet Turo was here. Captain Gantu shot a net at the girl and the little blue creature. It covered them so they could not move. Surprise! shouted Gantu and he laughed. <laughs> this was easy. He picked up the net and began to walk towards his spaceship. An Earth girl was inside the net with experiment 6 to 6, but that did not worry Gantu. He planned to take them both back to Turo. Nani was still looking for her sister. Lilo, where are you? She cried. Something walked by and Nani screamed. It was Gantu. The big alien did not even look at her. He just walked to his spaceship and dropped Lilo and Stitch into a glass container on the ship's side. You're all ready for the trip, he said to them. Gantu climbed into the spaceship and they began to move up into the sky. Nani just stood and watched. Lilo was on that ship, but Nani could do nothing to help her. But no container could hold experiment 6 to 6. Stitch was able to push his body through a narrow space between the container and the side of the ship. He was free. But there was no time to help Lilo. The spaceship shot into the sky and Stitch fell to the ground. Nani was waiting for him. She had a big stick in her hands and she hit Stitch with it. Talk! She shouted. I know that you're not a dog. I know that you can talk. Stitch got to his feet. Okay, okay, he said. Before Stitch could say more, a ball of green light knocked him over again. Jamba and Plickly jumped out of the forest and the big scientist grabbed Stitch. We've got you, cried Plickly. At last they could leave this planet. But then they saw Nani. Where's Lilo? She asked them. Jamba spoke slowly. Sorry, we don't know this Lilo person. Lilo, shouted Nani. She's a little girl and I want her back. We can't do that explained Blickly politely. Nanny fell to her knees and started to cry. Stitch moved in front of Nanny. Family, he said slowly. In a family, no one leaves you or forgets you. Stitch turned to Jamba and spoke in the scientist's language. What? shouted Jamba. After all this trouble, you want me to help you? Yes, said Stitch. 
Experiment 6 to 6 was clearly different now. Okay. Jamba said. We will help. What are we doing? Plickly cried in surprise. We are rescuing the girl, said Jamba. Minutes later, they were all flying in Jamba and Plickly's spaceship. Now they just had to find Gantu's spaceship. Soon they found Gantu's ship. It was time for Stitch to do something. He was more than Experiment 6 to 6 now. His purpose in life was more than to destroy. But he was still good at destroying things. Stitch jumped onto Gantu's ship and began to destroy it. He pulled Gantus through the front window and through the alien of his ship and onto the wing of Jamba's ship. Next, Stitch broke open the glass container. You came back, said Lilo. In a family, nobody leaves you, said Stitch. He jumped back to Jamba's ship with Lilo in his arms. Jamba's ship could not fly far with Gantu on it. The scientists flew the ship down to the water near the island. Nanny's friend David was there on his surfboard. David! shouted Lilo from the ship. Can you take us to the beach? David hit his surprise at the big spaceship and all the aliens on it. Okay. He answered. But I can't take everybody at the same time. He took Lilo and Stitch first. So you're an alien from this space? He asked Stitch with a smile. On the beach, the Grand Council woman was waiting. Put experiment 6 to 6 on the ship, she shouted to her police robots. Not experiment 6 to 6, said a voice. My name is Stitch. The Grand Council woman stopped. Can Stitch say goodbye? asked Stitch. He went and hugged Lilo. The Grand Council woman understood. Experiment 6 to 6 was different. He had a family who loved him. She changed her mind. Stitch can stay here. With his family. It was a strange family, with Lilo, Nanny and David, Cobra and even Jamba and Pleakley. But it was a happy one.